Thank you for joining us for this introductory tour of the Avid DS 10.5 system. Uh, in this case, we're running 10.5 software only on a MacBook Pro with uh, Windows 7 installed under Boot Camp. Side by side, I've also got the Avid Media Composer 5 software uh, running under uh, with AMA. I've got a Bamboo Pen Touch. DS is very pen friendly, so if you get the opportunity, I'd suggest you pick one up and try it. It's um, takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, you can't go back to anything else. Got a little USB hub with all kinds of gizmos plugged in, dongles and uh, trackball, all kinds of other stuff. And on the other side here, I've got an eSATA drive that's loaded up with a bunch of red files that we're going to use in this cut. Both MC and DS seem to be fairly happy with the eSATA drive. It's, you know, it's not... Uh, not the best of all worlds, but in a pinch, it's very portable and um, allows me to move around with my little MacBook and get the job done. So what we'll do is we'll go into the Media Composer side of things to get started. We'll take a look at the cut that we've created in here. What I have is um, a folder that has or a bin that has a series of red files that we linked in through AMA. So if I go to File, Link to AMA Volume. Under my computer, I've got an F drive, and there's this metric day one folder. You can see all these red folders in here. So I've linked those in just by linking to the AMA volume, and then I've gone ahead and thrown those together and put a cut together on this timeline. The timeline itself is this, there's this band called Metric, and they did some of the music for New Moon, which coincidentally, or by the way, we also did the 2K trailers theatrical for uh, Summit uh, for both New Moon and the End Eclipse. We did uh, the conforms and paint and all kinds of fun stuff for those. In this case, we've got this music video and you can see there's a title that kind of flies in and then dissolves out. We've got a glow, a Boris effect glow transition, some color effects. We've got a flop. We've got some dissolves. We have uh, a little side by side picture in picture. Maybe when we get into the finishing side of things, we'd like to take this guy and stabilize him so he's not moving all around here. And we'll do that over in the DS. Uh, we have a resize, we have another Boris, we have a colorize effect as a subregion, and then we have some uh, some sapphire plug-in glows, and those aren't licensed, but you still get the idea. And then last but not least here at the end, we've got a little TV screen insert that we'd like to comp into, if I just solo down here to V3 or monitor V3, we've got this girl looking at the TV, and it's got these green tracking markers here. That of course will paint out. So what I want to do is take all this over to the DS to do the finishing. It's got a great set of tools for that, uh, paint, compositing, and color. And what we need to do first off is take the sequence, right click, and we have to transcode it. So we have to create DNX media in order to get an AFE out of here. Uh, so up top here I've got the consolidate transcode and we choose where we would want it to go. Transcode, tell it if we want handles, and then click transcode. I've already done this. It was an overnight kind of process, uh, a lot of clips here. And then once it was done, I have the opportunity to take the final transcoded sequence and send it to my Avid DS. Uh, give it a name, tell it where you'd like the file to be created. In this case, we'll create it right back in the same folder where the red files reside, so we can keep track of everything. And the export settings in this case, again, are going to be sent to Avid DS, which makes us an AFE file. Click OK. You have the little circle. And there we are. If we check on our F drive just to make sure, under metric day one, scrub down a bit, we should have metric for Avid DS AFE. And that's what we're going to use to get this cut into our Avid DS. So let's go ahead and close that. We will open up our DS. Again, I've got them both running side by side. And let's go ahead and first we'll create a brand new sequence. So file, new, DS sequence. Don't worry about this one. This was my leftovers from last demo. Um, we're going to create a 1080p sequence. This is going to broadcast, so we don't need to create anything higher than that. But if we did want to, we have all these presets for film, including DCI, RED, RE, Super 35, etc. Again, in this case, we're just going to go 422, 1080p, 2397. So it's matching what the uh, frame rate of the camera was. 
Below that, we have the option of when we're rendering, do we want to render in 8-bit, 16, or 32? For rendering 16, 32, sometimes it helps with artifacts, with banding and gradients, things like that. And uh, we have the resolution we'd like to work in. So we can choose uncompress, of course, or we can go with one of the DNX flavors that are available. 115, 75, and 36 at 8-bit. Or if we switch to 10, we can go with uh, DNX 175. So at this frame rate, that's what we have available. We'll go ahead and leave this at 115, make it kind of light to work with. Again, this is a temporary setting, so if at any time we want to switch to uncompress, we can do so just by coming back to this dialog box. And once we get all that set up, we'll hit OK. OK, so what I've done is I've created a brand new sequence in DS. I've got a source and record monitor. I've got a timeline. I've got my little icons that if you've spent any time cutting in Media Composer, you'd be familiar with, in out, play. Uh, we've even got the weight lifter here, lift and extract. And then we've got our time code boxes below that. So in, out, duration from in to out, and our play cursor position. We have the same information over on our source side. Whenever we have a clip loaded in there, you would see this information light up. Down on the bottom below uh, the timeline here, we have same information, play position cursor, um, in, out, duration, and then also start, end, and duration for anything we select on the timeline, whether it be clips or effects or whatnot. Over on the left, we have our Avid bins, so our folders. Um, so if I open up the Metric Music project, you'll see I've got some preset folders already built here. Presets, LUTs, Metric Bin, RLX, Scripts. So I can add, um, I can make a folder.ini file that can put whatever folders I like in here. Um, every time that DS starts up, it'll automatically build a folder structure for me, which is very handy. Or I can actually go and put together a folder structure in Windows, which I've done here on my desktop, default project folders. So by copying these and going back to metric music video, I can paste those. Okay, and that means that every time I come into a project, I can just paste in this default folder structure. Now if I uh, double click on one of these, like cuts for instance, I see it's got folders within folders, so it's really easy to keep organized. Um, masters to file or to tape, current cuts, old cuts, other cuts, partial cuts, what have you. You can build whatever you want. I've even gone so far as to put in a uh, Word document, so this has uh, notes that might pertain to this particular project. So you can build all this up ahead of time and use it over and over again. So it can include slates or um, stills or whatever you might need for a particular project. It can, can all be pre-built. Okay, so what we want to do, though, is go to our um, AFE file, which is on our F drive, and we're going to load that into our DS. So first thing I'm going to do is when I bring this file in, I want to tell the DS under Sequence Preferences what to do with it as far as the size. So I have the option both for presets or effects from, from Media Composer or whatnot, or the media. Do I want to scale it down to 1080p, or do I want to leave it the original size, which would be 4K, which would give me the full 4K image available for pan and scan or what have you. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and lock the two together, scale and keep aspect ratio. At any time, I can take any of my clips and I can flip it back to 4K again and use that full frame size. So I'm not locked into this by any means. So we'll go ahead and just click OK. And uh, go find our AFE file, which is on our C drive. I have all these little uh, shortcuts that DS has available under this panel. So I can quickly jump into my metric folder. And we'll close this and this one so we can uh, open this up a bit. And there's our metric for Avid DS. Double click on it and it opens up the dialog asking us well, how we want to create the media, the clips, etc. A couple of different options. We can create link clips for file sources, which would basically link to the 4K R3D files. Or we can tell DS to force creation of external, external tape sources tell it to use the DNX media that was created during the transcode. We can start with this, work on the DNX timeline with the media from the DNX uh, transcode, and later we can flip it to use the R3D files. All the effects, the finishing, uh, everything that we've been doing would be available but using the actual R3D files as opposed to the DNX 115 or 175 media, whatever it was we created. We're going to go ahead and start with create link clip files for uh, link clips for file sources, which is kind of like working with AMA media, except in the DS, this isn't going to be real time until I process it. 
but um, I'll show you the difference. So we've got our bin here from the Avid. If I double click and open that, it shows me all the different sources, our 3D sources that were used in this metric for Avid DS cut. If you want, you can sift this bin by hitting set bin display, master clips, sub clips, turn those off, effects, motion effects, and groups, and it leaves us just with the sequence. Take this and drag it to your timeline. We'll hit the U key, and that pops it to start where the media composer timeline started. And then we'll have it build the sequence up for us. We'll just take a second here. Okay, and there it's gone ahead and it's built the timeline. So it's got zero errors and five notes. It builds a log file that we can look at, and it's basically going to tell us there's a couple of clips that didn't know what the video effect was. It's uh, some of the Boris stuff that we'll need to go in and just repatch. Not a big deal. If you want, you can save this out as an HTML file with little checkboxes, and as you go through and fix things, you can actually just click those checkboxes off. Let's hit OK, and take a look at what our sequence is built. Second here. So here is our media scaled down. It's um, 4K red file scaled into our 1080p sequence. If I right click and show safe action title, you can say, see this is 1080. And uh, if I wanted to get back to the original 4K file, I can right click on it. I'll click on it, it opens up the property page. And instead of scale keep aspect ratio, I tell it keep original size and position. In a second here, you'll see the 4K file which is this, pop into place. So now if we want to put a DVE on this, like so, we can just pan around, use whatever portion of this picture that we want. And also this is keyframeable, of course. Okay, so that's how we would get our AFE in here to start working with our clips. Um, so there's going to be some things I need to work on, of course. The uh, first is my fade up. As soon as it gets done here. Again, we're working on a Mac Pro with an ESATA drive, so there's a little bit of lag time. What I generally do is render this stuff once I get it in here, and then it all becomes real time to, uh, to work with. Okay, so I've got my uh, metric, my little uh, title here needs some work. My transition, that needs a little bit. Here's my color effects with my uh, curves from the media composer. Here's my curves. Uh, don't know what else. I just think I just curves on that one. Oops, not the color corrector. And then this one also has a hue offset on the midtones. And then if I go over here, let's see, here's my uh, Boris effect, which I'll have to take out of this container. It's basically kind of like nesting, so it's built a container, and I need to basically just pull this effect out of here by copying it and pasting it on my top timeline to cover this duration of clips. And then my uh, screen that I'll need to comp in. So um, this is just an introduction, kind of show you a little bit of DS and how quickly you can get the files that conforms across from Media Composer. And uh, the next tutorial will show you more in depth the effects such as color correction, graphics, tracking and stabilizing, and uh, some of the compositing features of the DS. Thanks for uh, having a look here, and um, we'll see you in the next tutorial.